My guest at this time is a former Lucha Underground champion. You may know him as Marty the Moth. It is Martin Cassius. Martin, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me here today. Thank you much for having me. My last name's Casaus. It rhymes with house. One of these days, people are going to get it right, damn it. I felt so bad because I, I was like, you should have asked him, Nick. You had like, <laughs> you just talked to him for like five minutes before you started this interview. You had every opportunity and I, and I blew it, you know? So it's, it's okay. You blew it. And, and, and that makes great content. So I can yell at you and give you crap for the rest of the rest of this interview. Now. Well, I'm really not one. I really blew this because I'm houseman, right? We have the same a U S and your a U S is pronounced the exact same way. My a U S is. And everybody always says Hossman when they meet me. And they that's I did what they do. <laughs> I uh, when I wrestled in AAA, uh, I'm like, it's a Mexican name. I'm in Mexico. They definitely got it. I go up there on the turnbuckle, I go like this, I'm like Marty Cashew. I'm like, Cashew. That doesn't even look like Cashew. Like they screwed it up big time in Mexico. So you didn't screw it up as much as much as the Mexican uh announcers in triple a so well and you nick houseman thank you um so how are you doing right now physically and mentally like what's what's the what's the status update on you at the moment uh i am better than i have been in years to be honest uh about two years ago i herniated my l4 my l5 and my spine they just read that out yeah um and uh i had to do some extensive recovery and rehab for that so once i felt like i could move my hips a little bit. I'm like, I got to get into the wrestling ring and rock and roll. So I actually signed up for the Nightmare Factory uh, with run by Q, uh, Co Cody Rhodes and QT Marshall. Yeah. Did, did uh, three months there. And then now I'm back and I'm a free agent. It's time to rock and roll. Okay. Because that's the last I really read when I was like looking into what you've been up to. Everyone was saying that you're at the, the Nightmare Factory. But I'm guessing you're no longer training at the Nightmare Factory then, right? Correct. Yeah. I had to move to Atlanta for three months to make that happen. And then now... Is I had a wedding to get to, so I got married last month. So that's another awesome life right, event. Right. But I had to get back in time. I, I got back in time uh, from training for like two weeks before my wedding. So I feel kind of bad. I like let the planner and my my wife plan the whole thing. As long as I was there and showed up and said I do, I figured it'd be fine for me. Yeah. But uh, but I got back about a month ago, a month and a half ago, and then my wedding was a month ago. So back and ready to roll. Nice, man. So I was just surprised in general. I was like, what is, what are you doing training? Like, it doesn't sound like you were so much like training so much as using this as a process to re rehab and like re familiarize yourself with the ring. Yes. Is that more the case? The, like, I always love learning. Like, I don't think in wrestling you're ever done learning. There's so many different styles, so many different ways to do things. Um, I figured by going to that school, I, I'd have that experience. I'd have the right people looking at me. I'd have the connections with AEW. I already know half the roster from Lucha Underground I was about um, to say. And, and my past experience. So, um, but it was mostly a test for me to like, hey, what can I do? What can I not do? Does is this injury still affecting me, or am I good? And awesomely enough, I, I am back, and it is rock and rolling and, and, and awesome. So I feel great, and I'm in some of the best shape I have been in years. So how was it working with Cody and QT? What is it like at the Nightmare Factory? I haven't talked to a lot of people that have had a chance to kind of train down there yet. Uh, QT Marshall, I, I met probably twice before this, but very, very brief. He was over at the Monster Factory before, and I went and did a seminar at the Mo Monster Factory in New Jersey. Okay. Um, I, I had no idea until I went to the school how knowledgeable that dude is. That dude can just pull out wrestling knowledge out, out, out of the back of his head, like so easy. He could just call a match while, while in there in the ring. It's so he is one of the best professional wrestlers I've ever been in the ring with. So that, that surprised me. Um, cause I hadn't heard his big name, his name. Uh, he hasn't had his ex exposure that he's getting as he is now. Right. Um, but he, he was one of the best workers I've ever gotten in the ring with. And, and that, I wouldn't say that's necessarily surprised me, but I, I wasn't expecting that. And, uh, just kind of just, Pick his brain. Glacier from WCW was yeah. one of the trainers there as well. Luther from AEW is one of the trainers there. I got a real good relationship with Glacier and uh, Luther. Okay. Um, so it was just great to kind of take bits and pieces of what people say in training and, and put it all together to what I do now. How, how engaged is Cody with that? Is he there often or is he just kind of coming in for like certain kind of seminars? Like, well, what is Cody's role like at the Nightmare Factory? 
I was lucky enough where they knew I'd wrestled before. So they actually just bumped me right to the advanced class and they didn't have me go through the 12 weeks um, of the nightmare factory training. Um, so that's where Cody spends most of his time is that class. Those guys have never wrestled before, never done a lockup, never done anything. So um, he was mostly focused on that. And the advanced class was kind of, was a, kind of an afterthought. Yeah. Um, but I was only there for three months. I figured, I'm going to go sit and learn as much as possible. So I actually sat, I went a couple hours early and sat in the beginning class, um, watched them uh, do their thing and then did the advanced class after that. So he was really a lot more involved with the beginning class and his monster factory class than he was with the advanced class. So I didn't get too much um, exposure with him, but the, the interactions we had were, were pretty good. Okay. He gave cool. my number and he told me to keep in touch. Um, I did some eight matches there at AEW and he said, every time I was on the, the card at AEW, the internet, had a good, a, a good response on the internet. So he's like, keep it up. And uh, it's just wild to me, Marty, if I can call you Marty and not yeah. Martin, is that all right? That's perfect. Cause like every, I know you primarily from Lucha Underground, right? Which is why I, I butchered your last name. Cause I know you just as Marty the Moth, right? Largely. Mm -hmm. And like, you are somebody that I associate as like a television ready pro wrestler and i'm not saying there's anything wrong at all going back to training at all i think it's actually uh, awesome that you did that but like it's just a little surprising to me there's not a whole lot of people i meet because like what, what what year did you start wrestling marty 2003 dude that's like set that's like 18 years and you're still taking classes man dude, in uh in, 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 in september which would be no october no october this year will i'll be wrestling for 18 years which is half my life so it's crazy thought to me but uh but yeah i don't think i'm still ever done learning um obviously I, i've had a great career i've traveled across the world japan mexico germany i've had a great career but i don't think you're ever done learning and so i just want to be the best wrestler i can be and if i could take a little bit of this as a nightmare factory a little bit of this and then put it into a match to make some magic then then more power for me so with the with the AEW dark matches now you were you had some great bouts here you were Brian Cage Jungle Boy uh, Matt Seidel I believe you were also in the ring with and um, you were wrestling during this weird pandemic era where it's just largely wrestlers at ringside um, when I was thinking about you in that space I kind of just wanted to pick your brain about how different was it performing in that space as opposed to when you were like on set in Lucha Underground kind of similarly only wrestling in front of like a handful of fans in that in the temple. Very different, very different. It felt more like practice matches. Okay. Um, like I was very excited about all three of the matches. I love wrestling Cage. I've wrestled him before. Um, I've never had a chance to lock horns with uh, Jungle Boy or Matt Seidel before. So um, I was really excited to, to do those. So it wasn't any a practice match in my head, but it felt like a practice match where there just wasn't a crowd. Um, and uh, I, the thousands of wrestlers experienced that in this past year, year and a half. And uh, we'll continue to experience that since I know some places are still in lockdown right now. Um, it was very different. And I'm very excited to have the fans back and have some real shows. Yeah. So when, yeah, you're, in the, so. when, when you're in the temple, though, like, is the I mean, was the energy there in a way that it wasn't when you were kind of in these no fan shows? Like, I would imagine it's got to be, I, I, I don't know, like filming for Lucha Underground. I know what it's like to film for TV. I, what is the vibe like when you're in that space there? I felt like a Lucha Underground it was a very different vibe than 99% of the places I go because it wasn't thousands of people like Triple Mania. When I go wrestling for at when I went and wrestle at Triple Mania, there's 28,000 people. And so you're playing to this back row. At Lucha Underground, you're probably 500 maybe people. Um, it's a couple hundred people, and they're very, very close and very intimate. They even have a chant in the beginning that they legally have to read, like, uh, Hey, there, there may be uh, some bodily fluids and blood going to you. And the fans are like, yeah, blood. Like, and they're going insane for that. Um, it was a Lucha Underground was a lot more intimate. So I don't think there's going to be a place that was that, that, that would felt like Lucha Underground or the temple. Like there was at that first temple. It, it, it was still there at the ice temple, but that first temple was, 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 was magical really. Yeah, and how do you feel about MLW playing in the waters of, of re-bringing back Lucha Underground right now with their Azteca Temple? I haven't watched the matches themselves, but I've seen the vignette with Dario Cueto, which mm -hmm. I'm not sure where he goes by now. Where is he going by now? 
I don't know exactly what he goes by now. I think he's just a, I think they just called him the boss or El Jefe or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's cool. And I've, I've heard so many times, Oh, Lucha Underground's coming back. Lucha Underground's coming back for years. Um, and, and now with the current landscape of wrestling, most of the Lucha Underground wrestlers are someplace else. So right. it's never going to be the same feeling as Lucha Underground, but Hey, I'm I'm very interested. They they caught my attention with that vignette with uh, Cueto, whatever they call him now. Right. That was El Jefe, and uh, I, I anytime El Jefe is involved, I'm my interest is peaked. Yeah, and I just didn't know like since you were so synonymous with that, and you're available right now and have television experience. Right. Like, I didn't know if MLW had reached out to you if there'd been any interaction about possibly becoming a part of whatever they're working on right now. You know, they have not. They have not reached out to me at all. Um, I, I've responded to some of their tweets and stuff, but I, they've not reached out to me and I have not reached out to them. Um, I did get somebody's number, so I will be reaching out to them soon. So okay. we'll see if you see MLW with Mario the Moth coming back. Okay, got it. It's pretty cool. They're over on Vice TV now. I'm excited to see what happens with them, you know, when they get back and doing regular shows and stuff again. I, l I love Selena and I love that they brought back Muertes at, as he is and at, was at Lucha Underground. Right. Um, anytime I could punch him in the face, I'm all for it. So back to AEW here real quick. Um, you got to do these, these dark matches. Uh, who were, who were some of the people you were working backstage? Who were some, did you get a chance to work with like Dean Malenko or any other cool producers when you're putting together the matches, anything like that? Um, let's see. It was mostly, it, it was mostly, oh geez. Uh, Christopher Daniels Ooh. was, was, was most of my agent for most of those. And, and he knows me from, from my past work and stuff. So he most just kind of let me to my own vices. I, I, and I, everyone I'd wrestled there are, are very well respected jungle boy cage. So he's like, okay, do your thing there. Um, and, uh, just kind of gave, gave me feedback, which was very little feedback on, Hey, you could make this a little bit tighter, da, da, da. But it, it was great seeing, seeing him again, um, and working with him, but it's just, it was cool having agents again and being back there. I love it back there because I know everybody still. Yeah, exactly. So what's the, what's the relationship like there? I mean, it obviously, it sounds like you left to go get married. Is there an opening you still see to kind of get back because of the inroads you'd made with Cody? Like, yeah. What, what's, what's the status there with you and them, I guess. Right now they told me to, uh, when they come near my, my local area, they'll give me a call. That's, that's what's at so far. Um, I have a good relationship with everybody, so I don't think I have any heat with anybody. That's good. Um, but I know they are just transitioning now from uh, the pandemic world to being on the road again. So we're, we'll, they'll see where the dice fall once they're back on the road, and then we'll see what the future holds for me. Did you ever get to pick the brain of Tony Khan or anything like that? Um, he was always constantly moving like Vince McMahon was when, when I was out uh, doing WWE stuff. He was very hands-on. Um, I did get, to, he came up and said, great match to me every single time. It gave me a little bit of feedback on certain things that I, I, I do a thing in Lucha Underground where I, I, I pretty much am a serial killer in Lucha Underground. Correct. Yes. Correct. Correct. Torturing people. Yes. I understand the whole exactly. thing. Exactly. So I grab people by their mouth and drag them like dead bodies, um, mm -hmm. like a serial killer would. Yes. And it was super fun for me and individualistic, but that was, they, they said, Hey, anything with the mouth is kind of Britt Baker's thing right now. So kind of adjust around that. So I kind of adjusted a few things and then I went to a choke thing instead of dragging people by their mouths. Um, so a few adjustments, but he came up to me after every single match and, and said, Hey man, good job. He came up to me the next day um, after two out of the three of the matches and said, Hey man, great job. It's good to see you. But while he's doing that, he's also also running and jogging backpedaling to get to work. Right. So it's always like, Hey, thanks man. Good job. Thanks for having me. Okay. Good scene, Tony. Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he was very kind to me while I was there, uh, and 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 he gave me a little bit of the of feedback of stuff to change. I changed it, and we'll see what happens in the future with that. So you brought up how he was. You reminded you a little bit of events like your time in WWE. Man, it was. I always like going to get to look in and research the people I'm going to talk to and kind of remember things, right? And I totally kind of blanked because it's been so long ago about like your time and tough enough, man. And like how you were really like breaking, you were breaking through and then got injured. And I had completely forgotten that that happened. When you look back on that now, like what, what are your reflections 
on the way that that kind of opportunity ended for you with Tough Enough? It's a trip, to be honest, because that was literally 10 years ago from the time that I was at the Nightmare Factory. So, uh, like, in my, I have a thing on my phone called Time Hop, so it'll show up stuff that I posted from years ago. And all the Tough Enough stuff was happening as I was there. I was like, 10 years ago, I'm picking the brain of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now I'm getting to pick the brain of QT and Cody and Glacier and Luther and, and all these people that have done such amazing things. So it, it's a trip that that was exactly 10 years ago from this point. Um, as far as the way that went, I, I tried not to play the what if and throw in scenarios of what if my ankle didn't break? Because who knows? I, I, I could have won the thing. I could have gone in there and like the winner of the show being adios in the year. I right. could have done that. I could I could still be the WWE. I don't know. I don't want to play these what if games because then I'll just tear myself apart. And there's nothing I could do about it anyway. Was was there any talks after you got injured and left the show about like go you you because you made it pretty far right? Like you were pretty deep in the season when that happened there, and a lot of people were really behind you. Was there any talk of like hey go home get injured go go heal up? Maybe we could do something with you after the fact, or was it just done so from the moment you got injured and, and left the show? Uh. It- as far as perspectives, they didn't tell me, hey, go home. We'll get me in contact with you. They, but Stone Cold Steve Austin gave me his cell phone number. He was very, very kind. Yeah. I was wondering about that relationship because I would imagine as a guy, because he had some injuries that he had to overcome. I would imagine off screen, there had to be some kind of conversation between the two of you. There was. In fact, I really think he was the one that like mostly cared about how professional wrestling ended up after his career was over because Right. He's the one that gave me his phone number. He's like, hey, send me some of your matches if you want. Let's keep in touch. Send me some of your matches. If you want me to critique them, then I'll critique them. I'm like, okay, I'll send some matches to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Get them critiqued. But I didn't hear anything from the WWE. It was always through Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I have no complaints about. <laughs> right? That's a pretty good thing. <laughs> That's a pretty I invited cool. him to my wedding anyway. It was worth a shot. Shoot your shot. Uh, and he didn't come? He didn't come. He didn't come. He's, uh, he, he's buying a new house in Nevada, so... He, wow. That was right in the middle of that. So priority started back. Right, right. Yeah. Well, at least he got back to you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, it blows my mind when I look at my phone. I'm like, I have a text message from Ray Mysterio, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and all these other people that are like, what is my life? Yes. <laughs> Steve Austin, Ray Mysterio. Oh, Nick, Nick Hausman, right? Hausman, Hausman, Hausman. Did I get right? You know, Hausman, whatever. But I got it just as good as he got my last name. Okay, got it. Wonderful. So with that, I mean, like you did leave a good impression, man, right? Obviously, Steve liked you a lot. I remember watching that season. I was a fan of yours. I know a lot of the people were big fan of yours. Do you have a relationship still with WWE? Is is there any talks or have you gone to a tryout in recent years? Anything like that? Um, I think after Tough Enough, I did a try. I did a try at the Performance Center. Um, and then really not not too much came out of that. And then they, I was told to put in for the tryout that's coming up here at SummerSlam, and so I did that. Now, I have I don't I've not been accepted or anything by that, but you know what? P- I put my stuff in, so we'll see what happens out of that. Um, that that's in August, uh, SummerSlam weekend, whatever that is. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe I can go there and get a try and see what happens there. But I haven't heard anything back yet. And they have my information. So they know where I'm at. All right. Hey, that's a pretty cool tease, though, man. Like, I think it'd be cool to go full circle, right? Like the rug to get pulled. And I know it's not like coulda, woulda, shoulda. You don't want to go back and like say how things could have been. But it'd be nice to get another bite of the apple. I'd be sure. I'd be sure. Very interested to see what you would do like in that space again. So absolutely. I I think now uh, I am. He he the, the I asked him straight up. I'm like, okay, you see me wrestle these last several weeks, uh, Steve. So, what do you think I really need to work on? He's like, just get as much work as as you can, and then try and put on some muscle. And I I've since done that. I, I I hired a personal trainer. I I started eating every three hours. I put on forty pounds of muscle since tough enough. It's been ten years. Uh, so I, I definitely got enough the experience and and the muscle mass that he he suggested that I get. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of how I would fit into that world, especially since I've wrestled most of those guys already. Ray Ray Ray, I've wrestled uh, uh, Ricochet. I, in fact, in that 
uh, the WWE thing that they had me put in, I started listing all the people on the roster. I just went down the roster. I'm like, I wrestled him already. I wrestled him already. Isaiah Swerve Scott. He, he's one of the champions right now. Yeah, North um, American champion. Down in and he used to be Kill Shot and Lucha Underground. I, I think I had one of my f- funnest and favorite match with him in Lucha Underground. Yeah. So it's like, it's not a far fetch for me, for me to be wrestling more of these guys that have already wrestled. Yeah, it's crazy, man. That Lucha Underground cast, it's like the original SNL cast. It's like everybody went on to do something and is like doing cool stuff, including you, man. Like you're still, every time I get to see you out there, I think the last time I saw you in the ring was like pre pandemic. So it feels like five years ago. But I think it was like, it was like the Impact show. It was like an Impact show that was like a joint show or something. I think it was in New York. Maybe it was one of the uh, media. We weeks. did WrestleMania Lucha Underground versus Impact. I think that was it. Yeah, that was the show I saw you at. And there was like, I think there was an X Division match on that show, if I'm not mistaken, where somebody did some crazy dive or some shit like that. Quite possibly. Yes. Quite possibly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, I remember, but I just remember, I remember seeing you in the ring and seeing, and I, I was like, the same, I was like, dude, that guy's fucking, so, excuse my language. I was like, that guy's big. Right. And like, you've got this like playful, jovial nature and like, Watching you in her, I was just like, you popped, man. That's why when I saw you raid our show the other day, which we haven't called out yet, I was like, that's not actually Marty the Moth. I've never actually like met you, but I have been a fan of yours. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. We got to get him on the show this week to pick his brain and figure out what's going on with Marty the Moth right now. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, and here we are. So yeah, it happens. We did it. All right. Well, hey, Marty, I want to thank you for taking some time, uh, sending your raider. You're always welcome to raid the show. We're not offended by it. Um, and obviously, I'm wishing you nothing but the best. Where can people go find you, follow you, support you, all those other great things? Uh, you can find me at martincasaus.com. I, I learned in the pandemic how to create websites. So I built that website myself. Uh, come check me out at martincasaus.com. Or if you want to, I literally stream Monday through Friday with my workouts. And then I play games Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash martincasaus. I keep pretty things pretty simple. Everything's just my name and every single social media has a blue check next to it. So it should be easy to find, but Martin Casaus on everything is where you can find me or martincasaus.com to buy all the merch. 